This is a, an article from February 21st, just a few days ago. A ticking time bomb in the Arctic. What is this ticking time bomb? Waters are warming beneath the ocean's sea ice. This is by Evan Lebowski on WHOI Education. When it comes to the ocean, deeper usually means colder, but there are exceptions. He says in the Arctic Ocean, for example, a warm layer of water trapped under 150 feet under the ocean's chunky ice flows by a ceiling of cold, fresh water near the surface. The cold layer insulates the sea from the warmer waters below. In a recent study, scientists found that the amount of heat in the trapped warm layer in the Beaufort Gyre, G-Y-R-E, a major Arctic Ocean circulating system through north of uh, Alaska, has doubled over the past 30 years. So the heat has doubled over the past 30 years. And if temperatures continue to spike, it could eventually spell trouble for the ice above. Now, why would the, heat, the water be heated underneath? Is there something uh, geothermal going on? That, I'm not a geologist, but that's the first question that comes to mind. Quote, at some point, the heat from this layer is going to have to come up to the surface and it's going to impact the ice, said John Toole, a scientist at Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute. This is the uh, WHOI for short. This is the site. This is the site that we're reading from. He's the co-author of the study. He says it's a ticking time bomb. The study by Mary Louise Timmerman of uh, Yale University, Tool and Richard Chrisfield of WHOI, was published in the Science Advice Advances magazine. They said the warm water layers forms in the summer when warmer air temperatures cause ice in the adjoining North Chukchi Sea to melt, exposing the seawater to the sunlight. The sun's rays heat up the water, and then winds sweep the warm meltwater towards the ice-covered waters in the Arctic Ocean's interior. Warmer water typically flows since it's lighter, but the higher salt content of this water makes it slightly denser than the more buoyant, fresher, ice-covered waters the warmer, saltier waters sink, and they get trapped below the colder surface layer. So it's not geothermal, it's basically temperature differences. They get trapped uh, because the salt water is heavier, it gets, goes down, and it gets trapped by the uh, fresher water, which is uh, becoming ice on top later on. Tool and colleagues from several other research institutes have been using instruments developed at WHOI called Ice Tethered Profilers. This is what we see here. Here, here, here. This is a, a surface buoy showing the foreground of the Ice Tethered Profiler. This is the top thick ice near the North Pole. The buoy supports long weighted line below the ice on which a monitored profiler unit crawls up and down, measuring water salinity and temperature from just below to the ice to hundreds of meters down. Electronics in the buoy transmit the data to locations to shore via satellite and the left to the left is the NPS, Autonomous Ocean Flux Buoy, AOFB, a system that helps scientists determine changes in ice cover, thickness and heat content, and ocean heat in the upper ocean, and the instrument was custom designed, fabricated at the Naval Postgraduate School NPC, NPS. Photo by Rick Grishfield. So this thing goes up and down measuring the water, bringing the information, uh, monitoring, back to the people who uh, need the results. So going on with this, two and colleagues from several other research institutions have been using instruments, as we said, the ITPs, the ice tethered profilers, to measure seawater temperature and salt content in the region since 2004. It starts with a large bright yellow surface buoy that sits atop the ice flows like construction barrels on a snow-covered highway. Hanging from each buoy is the weighted cable that dangles through an 11-inch um, diameter hole. This is it right here. And uh, in the ice and into the ocean. 
and uh, a monitorized sensor package travels continuously up and down the tether through various layers of the ocean in yo-yo-like fashion, taking continuous measurements of temperature, salinity, and other seawater properties along the way. The ITP, together with ship-based observations, gave the scientists the ability to quantify changes over the past 30 years and reveal the unexpected large and rapid warming in the ocean, quote, due to the northward retreat of the summer sea ice age in recent years, the ocean has been soaking up a great deal of solar energy during the summer, said Tool, leading to his uh, surprise increase in heat content of the warm layer. The study is yet another case in point of why melting Arctic ice is a problem. When ice melts, it can no longer play the important role of reflecting sunlight. Instead, the melting gives the sun unfettered access to the open water allowing the ocean to absorb more heat. As that heat diffuses upward over time, it stalls the growth of the sea ice during the winter in the region, uh, uh, Tool said. Quote, and if the deeper, warmer water starts mixing more vigorously with the cloud, the cold water above it, we will see even more sea ice thinning during the summer, he said. And uh, let's go now to the, this one was about a few months ago. Ticking time bomb, as we said. The Arctic is not a good way. The oldest, thickest ice, sea ice is breaking. Strange lakes punctuate its landscape, as we see here. And uh, things could be about to get worse. New research has uncovered evidence that vast reservoir heated water building up underneath the Arctic Ocean, penetrating deep into the heart of the polar region where it threatens to melt the ice frozen on top, and maybe a lot of it. He says we documented we document striking ocean warming in one of the main basins of the interior Arctic Ocean. This is it here. All right. The legend is here, Yale University. Okay. Uh, the Arctic Ocean and the Canadian Basin it explains oceanographer Mary Louise Timmermans from Yale University. Timmermans and her team analyzed temperature data on the Canadian basin. As we can see, it's just north of, uh, towards the North Pole, Pole, north of Canada, over Alaska. Taken over 30 years, and found that the amount of heat in the warmest part of the weather had effectively doubled in the period 1987 to 2017. That's amazing. Amazing. It doubled. The basin which sits north of the Alaska is made up of mixed layers of ocean water with cold, fresh water flowing at the surface, sitting on top of the warm body, body of water, saltier ocean trap beneath it, as we said below, beforehand. The dynamic has long been the case, but it's the rapidly heating conditions of the warmer reservoir below that has scientists concerned. Uh, Timmerman says presently this heat is trapped below the surface layer and should it mi be mixed up to the surface there is enough heat to entirely melt the sea ice pack that covers this region for the most of the year. According to researchers, the warmer submerged waters have been archiving heat due to anomalous solar heating of surface waters in the North Chukchi Sea, which feeds the Canada Basin. So uh, it's uh, twice as, uh, twice as uh, hot as it was before. Uh, and uh, it's, I guess, glad that it's going to be getting warmer. Uh, now, I wonder if this has anything to do with the water currents and the air currents around the world, because, you know, we've seen a tremendous amount as the year passed by, and just years, last year, in the beginning of this year, we've had record-breaking extreme weather conditions, whether it was heat, like we just saw in uh, uh, terrible heat, wave in uh, Australia, followed by unbelievable rain and hail the size of your palm. Uh, this is just too much from one extreme to the other. I mean, the poor animals in Australia, the kangaroos, for example, were uh, sitting in people's pools with their little heads, their little no noses stuck out so that they could uh, cool themselves off. They were suffering so much, the poor animals, let alone the people. Um, so obviously the currents, the ice sheets, and the currents and the water currents 
uh, I believe it seems that they have something to do with the um, air currents, of course, and the weather above us in the atmosphere. Uh, okay, I'll leave links below for you for this. This one here is on Science Alert, and the other one was from WHOI. Thank you. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.